for starting the day with us. I got a text message from my mom. I'm in a little bit of trouble. I said 68. She's still 67 for a couple more months. For a couple, I know. I'm sorry, mom. I love you. Welcome back. When you think of 80s pop culture, what comes to mind? If you watch this show a lot, probably, I reference it a lot. Maybe The Karate Kid, The Breakfast Club, Dallas. Our next guest loves the 80s so much, he's written three books about the decade. Give it up for Chris Clues, everybody. Hi, Chris. How you doing, Jason? Hi, buddy. Oh, this is one of my favorite bookings ever because anybody that works here knows I love this decade. I was a kid and a teenager, and uh, I love it. What do you think, if we're speaking to the youngins out there, what was it, Chris, about the 80s that for pop culture made it so iconic? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I think when I talk about the 80s and pop culture and, and specifically, it was like a glitter bomb. I say it was like somebody took a glitter bomb, threw it against the wall and all these wonderful colors came out. And that was all the create creativity and individuality in the 80s. And we saw all these explosions of genres and movies and music. So I, I think that's a big reason why. There was a lot of experimentation. That's why we had so many one-hit wonders. Absolutely. Let's talk about three specific, because you, you feel that there's some life lessons in a lot of great 80s movies. Let's begin with Trading Places. Uh, talk to me about this. Great movie, uh, Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy, Amy Lee Curtis. So we'll focus on Eddie Murphy's character. And uh, I love that, I love this movie. Uh, Billy Ray Valentine. So Billy Ray Valentine, we see at the beginning of the movie, he's a really smart guy. And uh, he ends up getting this opportunity to become a commodities broker uh, you, you know, without getting too deep into the plot. He ends up as a commodities broker, but he's never done this before. And he's very nervous the night before. And he goes to Coleman the butler and he says, what if I can't do this job? What if I'm not what they expected? And Coleman says, just be yourself, sir. They can't take that away from you. Now, if this was the only lesson, this idea of just being yourself, that's a really important one, but there's a bigger one here. And it's about questioning yourself. We talk to these days about imposter syndrome and this idea that you know confident people question themselves, arrogant people question others. Oh. And I think that's a really important lesson that you know, as long as you're questioning yourself, you'll get better. As soon as you stop questioning yourself, where are you gonna go? You're gonna start questioning other, other people. So confident people question themselves, arrogant people question others. Well, that is an Oprah line right there. I'm writing that down. So let's move to a movie that I love, uh, Breakfast Club. What, what, this was really talking to people about being an individual. Am I right on that, Chris? You're exactly right on that one. And I think uh, there's, you know, in my book, I have lessons from every character in The Breakfast Club, including Carl the janitor and Principal Vernon. Uh, but one of them, when you talk about individuality, let's focus on Andrew, the athlete, and this conversation they're all having at the back of the library, which I think is one of the great scenes in the movie. And he says, we're all a little bizarre. Some of us are just better at hiding it, that's all. And this is a really important moment because we all look at Andrew, we think, oh, the athlete, the, the popular guy, but yet inside he feels this, this kind of bizarreness about himself, just like we all do, and it's important. You know, we say, in today's, today we say, you know, let your freak flag fly, right? This is so important to just be yourself. And I hope that they show this movie in high school because I think it's really important for kids today to see that it's okay to be you and to be who you are. And the people who love you and like you will surround you. Those will be the important people in your life. So we're all pretty bizarre. It's, it's, some of us are just better at hiding it, that's, that's all. Just be you. Absolutely, it's a running theme of our show. Let's move uh, to Field of Dreams. What lessons can we find? Uh, yeah, that's such a great movie. What, what can we learn there? Yeah, you put, uh, you, know, you, you put Hollywood and baseball together and it's usually, uh, there's usually a pretty good result. Uh, and then you add James Earl Jones who you're showing there and it's a great result. So, um, you know, we talk about the idea of logical and illogical. And so here is this, uh, this farmer who decides that he's going to take his crop, the corn that pays the bills and takes care of his family and he's gonna raise it and he's going to build a baseball field in the middle of it because he heard a voice tell him that he should do it. And so we think about this and he even says to Annie, his wife, he says, you know, I've just done something totally illogical. And it's this idea of logical equals safe, illogical equals crazy, quote unquote crazy. But what do we get from illogical ideas? We get innovation, creativity, right? Without the illogical, we're not going to have these, these great inventions that we have today or we've had in our history. Logical is important for building bridges and roads, of course, but Ill illogical is a lot more fun, and that's really where we get our advancement from. 
What did Dallas and Knott's Landing teach us? <laughs> I'm just joking. I, I, I love both of those shows, Chris. I'm sorry. I, I had to ask. I think that nighttime soap operas are better than daytime soap operas. Yes! <laughs> Chris, you're officially my favorite guest ever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. No, but seriously, I mean, when you think yeah. of, I mean, we just talked movies. When you think of genres that define the 80s, you do have to mention primetime soaps, the dynasty, Dallas, Falcon Crest, Knots. Absolutely. I mean, you think about probably the greatest mystery in all of television was who shot JR. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt. Oh, Chris, I got to say thank you because this really is a love letter. A lot of our show uh, covers. Uh, uh, being an individual and 80s pop culture. So you basically wrote the best book ever for us. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jason. Stay right, everybody. Thank you. Raised on the 80s is available wherever books is sold. Right there it is. Or go to Chris's website. It is chrisclues.com. It really was. It was, I mean, music and just every, it was just a fun Fun, Saturday morning cartoons, for heaven's sake. I was talking about that earlier. Kids don't even, you had to wait. Kids, are you, listen to Aunt Jason for just a second. You had to, now listen, come back to the kids. Give it, come back to the TV kids. Can you imagine a world where you had to wait for one day of the week for all your cartoon enjoyment? We, we, didn't, we couldn't get cartoons on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We had to wait until Saturday and get the biggest bowl of cereal you could ever find on Earth. And you lay on the carpet and you shovel that, 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 that uh, Captain Crunch in your mouth and you watch Scooby-Doo until your gums bleed. I mean, that's really what being a kid in the 80s was all about. Yes. <laughs> We're going to take a break. So much more ahead when we return. Back in a moment. Ha, 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 ha.